Hi, this is Scarlett. This tutorial video is about Power Apps. Um, you know, when we build Power Apps, um, one of the challenges we face is, you know, the app is going to supply to um, multiple users for them to input data, or edit data. But um, Power Apps it doesn't come with a out-of-box native approach where we can mm, kind of put in a check-in, check-out record or lock unlock record when a user is editing it so that we can prevent multiple users editing the same record simultaneously. In this video, I want to share with you a pretty simple approach that I have been using to achieve the goal of locking a record and uh, prevent multiple users uh, editing at the same time. Let's jump right in. So before we get into the Power App itself, on uh, this demo, um, I'm using SharePoint list as my data source. So if you're using a list, so it's easy for you to follow through. Um, you will need to add two new columns in your list first. One is, is editing. This is a yes or no Boolean column, which will be used to be patched later on. And the other column is called editing by. It's just a simple single line of text column, which we will patch the username. Now let's go back to the Power Apps. You can uh, let's quickly take a look at the uh, final result after we will implement everything. Okay, I'm going to quickly let's say I'm going to change the um, edit this project. When I go into the project details, you know, I'm going to click on this button. So once I click the pen, I expect now the record is locked for me. So when other users also click on the same project going to see the project details their pencil the pen edit button will show grayed out so meaning it's disabled so they can't even click to edit it and it's now locked for me to edit solely let's say i forgot to do something and then like you know i just leave this screen and then i remember oh i haven't finished editing so i'm going back to this and then it tells me you're still locking this ref record for editing. If you don't want to update it, please save or cancel to unlock. So it reminds me I'm locking this still. And let's see what's behind the scenes look like. Okay. You see that this project on hold, because I clicked the editing button, it patches SharePoint list is editing is being checked, say true editing by me. So this is locked out by me. So I should continue my editing, um, you know, let's say I add some notes, whatever, and then I click save. Or I decided that I don't want to edit at all. I'm going to say cancel because I want to unlock it, right? Now, once I click one of the save or cancel button, this record is now being released. And if it go back to here, you see that it's being patched. Is editing and editing by is being patched to uh, blank so that other people now, if they come to this project and click on the edit, well, first of all, the edit button will now not be disabled. It will show normal state and then they can click to edit. So this is pretty cool, right? Now let's see behind the scenes what's happening here. Um, first, in your apps on start, if you haven't done so, because I normally do for all the apps, I like to set the global uh, variable for current user with the user email and current username, the user full name, which I can use later on. So basically, when, uh, well, for, oh, a little reminder, if you just edit it, you need to click run on start to make sure it's being activated for you to use. Now, the uh, username, I can use it easily anywhere. Like for example, this, I say, hi, current username, it's gonna print my name there, right? Now on the project board, I have a background button, uh, or if you prefer, you can use the button, like the right arrow as well, just put the same code. The on select of this button or the arrow button, what you can do is, first of all, you set a variable for this current item. 
this item.id, it's this project. If you're working on something, you can change the name, obviously. It's, uh, it's important that we set a variable here when user click on one of the uh, item, because this variable would then be passed onto the project detail screen and being used to um, check whether this is the current record being editing or not. So this block of code, if you read it, is just basically checking if this current record being editing by if the name match my name. So if it match my name in the list, it's going to say that, oh, you're still, oh, if it's not, sorry, this is not, if it's not my name or not the specific user, current username, it's going to say that it's being logged for editing by and then it print the name of your colleague, whoever is locking it, right? Because we print the name there, uh, we patch it in the list. Otherwise, if it it's equal to the current username, just like earlier, I was the one locked it, it was you will say you still lock this for editing. Make sure you unlocked it. So this is the on select property of the uh, gallery button where you trigger to click and navigate to the next uh, detail form screen. Now on the project details, you see that you you would know you know you have a form where you allow user to edit the details of the information. If you look at the edit button, so first of all the display mode. What we have control is I actually make it a little bit more complicated here. You. Um, I add a condition where if this project, this variable is blank, like there's no, and then it will show disable as well. So it's just like if you have other screen where, you know, you also can point to this form where you did not set this project variable so that it's blank, and then they won't just, you know, allow you to edit some random record. So this is something like an extra. Basically what you, need to look at is this part, look up. If the ID equals is editing is true, and then if it doesn't equal the current username, display disable. So it check if I'm not the one um, coming, tr coming to this, uh, viewing this project, this particular record, it's going to disable the edit button. Otherwise, show that edit. That's why when I navigate away, come back, it's still activated for me because I am still the current user locking it, right? But other people, this will be grayed out. So this is the, um, this uh, edit buttons, sorry, edit buttons, display mode. And also in the on select where we put the lock feature is, you can see that I have a patch function here. So it's gonna patch the list and then ID equals this project and then patch is editing equals true, editing by username. And then also notify the user, I'm locking it for you. So this is very simple and straightforward. Now, if we take a look at the um, other two button, which is for unlocking, okay? You can actually shorten the time. This is like setting 5,000, which is like what, five seconds. And then if it's too long, you can make it like 2,000 or whatever. So it would be or 1,000. So it's make it one second long. So it doesn't stay that long. So if you look at both of the buttons, I have the same patch code where it will be patching this list is editing now becomes false. Editing now it's like blank so that, you know, it's exactly Right now it's editing because I just click into it. So editing's true and patch my name. Once I click the uh, cancel button or the save button, it will now patch editing editing uh, by blank and it's editing's false. Exactly what I showed you earlier. Now we can do it again, cancel. And then we go back to project list you will see that now it's being patched in, in the background. If it doesn't show right away, you can refresh it. It's normally actually patched and then you can see the result. Now you see that it's being patched and clear. Okay.
that's pretty much all the places you need to make sure the code is being changed. It's quite straightforward. It's very effective. Uh, I encourage you to test it in your own app and see how it goes. Um, you can actually even add a timer on your project details and then, you know, add extra feature where the timer, you know, uh, for example, when they click the edit button, you trigger a timer to start on on start, and then you can, uh, you know, use some uh, on timer start, you know, starting to calculate, let's say an hour for the user, and then on timer end, it will force saving this record and then unlock the record, uh, even the users not doing it. Um, themselves, but I tend to not want to do that because I, I don't want the user feel like pressure. Uh, if it's in your um, kind of like interest that you can actually try that out. Uh, the other thing is um, just to avoid people forget or they just close the Power App without saving or canceling, which means that it will forever be, you know, true in is editing and editing by the person you don't want that right you don't want a specific record being locked for the long time and you'd manually have to fix it what i do is i create a power automate flow which will run every morning at let's say 7 a.m it would patch the list these two column uh, by cleaning them up like patch is editing to false and then editing by like now and then that way every morning you do a clean up and then all the records will be unlocked ready for everyone to come and edit so that's it um, if you have any questions i have a uh, technical article write up which i'll link in the video so if you want, you can also, you know, see the codes there as well uh, so that you can copy without typing everything. Um, if you have questions, leave in a comment and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.